Jason, do you think they've gone far enough? Do you think the new management team could have been more aggressive here? I, in, in some ways, you could view this company as a company now kind of almost admitting that it's in runoff. Well, it, it's, um, it, it's definitely a big incremental statement, Guy. Uh, I would say that there is a major strategic update coming from BP in September. And I, I think that they would like to uh, more holistically flesh out what the new strategy is going to be before uh, taking much further moves. I'd also point out, though, that they do think that they can get their break-even price uh, where their cash flow covers their dividend and CapEx down to $35 a barrel. So, you know, I think there's still some, some room for maneuvering here. I just don't get how any of these oil companies, but particularly then BP as they transition, can sustain their dividend payout, Jason. Well, I, I would say that, at least in the near term, the investment that's going to be made into the low-carbon businesses is going to be relatively low. Uh, there's not a lot of scalable opportunity currently. So uh, if we're looking at CapEx in the range of, let's say, $1 to $2 billion per year, uh, relative to a, uh, an overall capital program of 12 to 14 and a dividend of eight, I, I think the investments can still be made, at least in the near term. I guess the, the bit that sort of sticks out in my mind, though, is presumably this makes gearing a, a really tough proposition for new management. If I, if I write down these assets, presumably that raises my gearing ratios. And at some point, therefore, I'm going to be under more pressure as a management team to have a significant go at reducing that gearing. All the rating agencies will make me. Doesn't that kind of encourage the company to preserve cash? Uh, this is a very important point, Guy. This is going to take their gearing ratio above 40 percent uh, versus their uh, targeted range of 20 to 30 uh, percent. It would require about $20 billion of lower net debt to get back into that range. Uh, so you're, you're correct that the balance sheet is probably a bigger concern in the near term uh, than investments in low-carbon energy. Uh, I, I would say that these brick measures are only one of the things that the ratings agencies look at. Uh, cash flow is still well under two times EBITDA. Or, sorry, net debt is still well under two times EBITDA. So I, I, I do think the BP uh, is still within uh, investment grade uh, ratings on most metrics. But to piggyback off of Guy's point, I mean, the pressure is even more intense now to get that gearing level down. Um, selling assets into this environment seems like that's going to be a tough go, especially as their Alaska sale, they had to re-rate the price that they were going to be able to sell at. What do they do? You're absolutely right that it's very difficult to get uh, particularly upstream asset sales away in the current environment. Uh, I suppose it's possible that they could look to other parts of the portfolio uh, or simply extend the time frame uh, where they're willing to carry a higher gearing ratio. Uh, but all these points are incrementally certainly putting more risk on the dividend. And I would still have as my base case that they maintain it. Uh, but those risks are starting to pile up. They're making a ton of cuts, I, senior management effectively being cut in half, uh, particularly uh, the, the burden of that is going to fall on Houston. I, w when we get to September, when we get to this update, how significant a sort of change will we see in BP's trajectory? I, they're already taking the knife to big portions of this company. I, how much of this is just kind of an incremental build towards that moment and kind of September is an aggregate of all of it? Or do you think kind of we see the, the kind of an even bigger momentum shift taking place towards the back end of the year? Yeah, a 15 percent uh, reduction in workforce is, is quite significant. Um, and it, well, they have said it will primarily affect office jobs. I think a lot of the uh, the work that's done to bring projects uh, to the point of final investment decision uh, could be affected by this. They have talked about uh, investing uh, less in their oil and gas businesses over time. Uh, I, I think we'll see actually uh, a pretty significant uh, uh, move towards addressing energy transition yeah. in September. I think it's going to be a big event.